What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to G Myers World Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about Monday Night Football Week 11 2020, wrapping up the week with the Rams and the Buccaneers. Now, Tom Brady's night wasn't a night that he probably wants to remember. I'm going to tell you guys this right now. Many people said that he did not have the talent in, uh, you know, obviously in New England. He wanted to get out of there. Bill Belichick hates him, blah, blah, blah. But now he has a number of players that are going to be probably, you know, well, Antonio Brown was on the Hall of Fame path and then he started doing weird stuff. But Mike Evans is pretty good. Rob Gronkowski is pretty good. You know, like I said, Antonio Brown. So he has players. He has talent around him. Um, I love that Leonard Fournette uh, touchdown, by the way. It was kind of vicious, but I don't want to hear the excuse about the fact that he doesn't have enough talent and, you know, they're not on the same page and there's not a lot of practice because all the NFL teams are dealing with some type of situation where you never know if it's just going to be a Zoom call because dudes are on quarantine. It's a lot of different things going on. So it, it's not just specific to Tom Brady. If that's what you are, if you are the GOAT, you can't play like this. The picks that he threw were so ridiculous. He threw a Stevie, dude. Like, he was just throwing the ball anywhere. And it's kind of weird, you know, the way that people talk about it when he throws an interception as opposed to any other quarterback. You know, if Aaron Rodgers throws, a, throws an interception, it's like, oh, my God, you know, what's he doing? He has to do better. Tom Brady throws it. Oh, you know, they, they haven't been on the same page because they haven't practiced. It's all foolishness. But you know what's going to happen? They got to make a decision because... Once the playoffs comes around, I'm telling you right now, Taysom Hill, a lot of you guys are still questionable about it, right? I think it makes the I think it makes the Saints a more dangerous team. So when you look at that situation in the NFC South, I'm just letting everybody understand a couple things. Taysom Hill has the talent and he has the experience and he's been there. You see what I'm saying? Like he he's seen Drew Brees and he's learned from a Hall of Famer. Now he's more talented as far as like movement getting outside the pocket, running, throwing on the run. So he has a lot of different knowledge about the game. And if he's able to put that together, Sean Payton is going to look like a really, really um, super genius. It's pretty much what's going to happen because there's a lot of broken uh, ribs on Drew Brees, you know, collapse, lung, all that stuff. We don't know if he will be ready to go when it's time for the playoffs, but I'm not worried about that. The reason I bring that up is because defensively, they have Tom Brady's number. So at some point, he has to play the Saints. And it's not like every week he's playing against a Saints-type defense where they just man up his uh, receivers and go wild on him. But, again, the Rams do have a solid defense. You know, their corners have got Jalen Ramsey out there battling with Mike Evans. I think Mike Evans pretty much was doing his thing for most of the night. The bottom line about it is, though, they didn't make enough plays because the turnovers were so critical. And then the Rams were able to do something with it in those different times. So... It's a very, very um, interesting way that this is starting to unfold because once we heard, you know, Gronkowski's coming out of retirement, we heard a lot of stuff. He had two receptions on six targets yesterday. Rob Gronkowski, one of them was a really bad, um, you know, just body assignment when he when he threw it to the left side of, um, of the sideline. Rob Gronkowski's fly, you know, he's just out of bounds. It's just like a lot of the muscle memory and things that goes into what, uh, you know, Tom Brady and Gronk used to do is just not happening right now. So. There are a lot of different things that's making it uh, relatively difficult for everything to come through. Leonard Fournette dropped a wide open pass with Greenfield right in front of him. Many of these things that are going on right now, would it have been going on if we did have a preseason, we did have a practice? Probably not, but it is what it is. And the world is what it is. And we have to continue to evolve and overcome. And Tom Brady's just not doing that right now. 26 of 48, 216 yards, two TDs, two interceptions. It's not gonna work that way. These type of things, you know, it's not going to make it so that everybody feels like they're comfortable going into the playoffs with this team. And I'm going to tell you right now, they're not coming out of the NFC. I don't think that they're good enough to come out of the NFC. So that's already an issue. People need to understand that and start to be realistic. Now, when you look at the Rams and Jared Goff, it's not like Jared Goff played out of his mind. 376 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Um, he made he made a couple bad throws too, but he's Jared Goff. You see what I'm saying? When Jared Goff does Jared Goff things, nobody complains about it. But when Tom Brady is doing Jared Goff things, people just make it look like, oh, he didn't have the practice or he didn't have whatever. They have to stop making excuses for what this guy is doing. That's the biggest part about this whole situation because everybody has to play their part. And what's going to go on is this, right? When Tom Brady doesn't make a play and it's in the playoffs and they get eliminated, they don't have an, we don't know what's gonna come next year. We don't know what's gonna happen. You know, players might not be available, whatever. It's not gonna be the same thing. He's filled with a lot of veterans with talent and he has Godwin, you know, a younger player that, you know, is in the mix. He has a lot of people around him that can do things, but sometimes it's just too much. Sometimes it's like, you don't need all that. Why do you have all these players? Like for instance, 
adding Antonio Brown into the mix, it probably wasn't necessary. Because like I said, I'm looking at it and I'm like, he has all that stuff. And then I'm looking at Jared Goff and then Jared Goff has two receivers of over 130 yards in Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. So why are you adding all this stuff? You don't need it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just really excessive with the Bucks. Like the rich getting richer, but this is just like unnecessary riches. Because Antonio Brown, even on that play where he went deep and dudes just manhandle him all over him, bro. Like he he's not doing what he was doing as the older Antonio Brown because he lost a year. He lost a year because of ridiculous behavior. And now he's trying to regain something out of it. And then he's forcing other players around him to deal with it. But it's harder to deal with that stuff when you lose. Like when you're winning, everything is good, but he's losing right now. So that's, a, you see what I'm saying? Like that's the major problem. You can't buy into a system just because Tom Brady's there and he's not winning. Like there's, there's no correlation with it. Like, all right, you have all these rings, but that's in the past. Are you gonna do anything right now for the Buccaneers? And the Rams don't look like they care about, you know, anything that the Bucs were doing last night. It was just like, all right, I'm gonna go out here and throw this. Their defense supposed to be number one in this, number one in that. Now they did lock up the run. You know, Malcolm Brown was the leading rusher with 20 yards on three carries. Um, Cam Akers didn't do too much, five carries, uh, 15 yards. It wasn't a lot being done there, but what is, what's up with your, 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 your secondary? Bro, your secondary has more holes than Swiss cheese. Like how, how do the Bucks expect to do that? Remember the differences between Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady over all those years when he was with New England. Tom Brady always had a top 10 defense. That If they play like this, this right here that the Bucks are doing, Tom Brady ain't getting nothing. Tom Brady going home, and I got news for you. Bruce Arians doesn't care, bro. The dude is very, very critical. He's like, you know, he's like a worse version of Bill Belichick when it comes to critiquing Tom Brady. Cause he's outright saying it wild. Like, you know, Bill Belichick used to be like kind of subtle with it. Yo, Bruce Arians just outright like, yo, this dude right here is garbage. Like, I don't know how Tom Brady's dealing with all this, but again, looking at the way the Rams are right now, offensively, Jared Goff is just slanging the ball everywhere and it looks like it's working. At one point, they only had five yards in the game. They were just throwing the ball because they have no pass defense. Like, what was it, Meaty Claus, um, Pierre Paul? Uh, that guy, if he doesn't you know, get an interception, if he doesn't like bat balls down, if he doesn't play out of his mind, this could have been a, in a, been a wash. It, you know, they could have destroyed him a lot worse than it actually turned out to be. Just keep that in mind, guys. So, you know, we're gonna have to wait to see how this transpires, but I'm not confident at all um, in the Buccaneers when I watch this team play. And I think a lot of it has to do with trying to overcompensate because I don't think they need Antonio Brown on the team. And that's just my personal opinion. Uh, we'll, you know, give them some time and see what happens, but I don't think it's going to work out. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. You enjoy your day. Until next time. One love, y'all.